Well, does, does Midland even have a city government? I think so. No. All right. All right. But then, but the, the people of Midland might be if there is a if the county sheriff if there's a countywide curfew, but I don't think there is. So that's because doesn't the Clinton County Sheriff's Office maintain jurisdiction yeah. over Midland? Yeah. So yeah, so they can't enforce. Yeah, there's no if there's no county curfew, then Midland would have to have a curfew. Yeah. yeah. Say like Blanchard wanted to pass a law, would they have to go through the county to pass it first? It depends on what the law okay. is. Oh, all right. It all depends. I mean, like you, the the Blanchester cannot pass a law that goes against Ohio law or federal law. So, like the city of Blanchester couldn't pass a law that you're allowed to own fully automatic weapons. <laughs> Or you could buy a grenade launcher. Or something. <laughs> you know, the city of Blanchester couldn't pass a law that goes against the club in Ohio or its federal law. So, now you, you realize, yeah. How is it that states would get as marijuana without the federal? Well, that's an that's an interesting dynamic that's happening right now because at one point, the the like with Washington and Colorado passing their laws. Uh, basically legalizing marijuana, there was question as to whether or not the federal government would still punish those people under federal government laws. Because there are federal government laws concerning drug use, and then there is state-by-state -state laws concerning as well. So that's one that falls under is kind of like the gray area. So if you smoke a problem with that, you're going to be stuck If the federal government chooses to enforce federal law in the state of Colorado. Can't like um, like highway speed limits and stuff be like county controlled? Those like, yeah, those can be, but they're definitely state laws concerning the states are you know determine what the speed limit is going to be on the roads and highways that run through that state. You must say because I know that if you were to like in certain counties, even if they only have like a mile stretch of a highway and it's the same county on either side, other side, if you were to get caught going at the speed in that one, they can't be controlled. Yeah, so it's just like a mile. Right. Yeah, it just depends on what the limit is set by that county official or whatever. So, I mean, but that's the way that our federalist, the system of federalism is supposed to work. You know, the people in Washington, D.C., the mindset with the government, the way we have it structured is, well, in Washington, D.C., we don't know what's best for everything concerning the people of Manchester, so we need to give their city council and mayor the power to pass certain laws because they know what's best for that town not the people in Washington, D.C. kind of thing. So, and you realize there are things that are still a state-by-state -state decision. You know, for example, the drinking age for alcohol consumption, that's a state-by-state -state thing. That's not a federal law. Because if Ohio wanted to pass a law to lower its drinking age to 18 or 16 or 12, they could do that. Yeah. Like, I thought that, you know, every state changed it because there was, like, the, pretty much the federal government was kind of like a threat to them, like, you're not going to be able to get some, some money for certain things. Exactly. What happened, and, and what Zach is referring to, is back in the late 70s, early 80s, when there was a lot of pressure um, to change the drinking age from 18 to 21 in the United States, the federal government basically came out and said this to every state. You can have whatever drinking age you want. That's your right. But we have now passed federal regulations that any state whose drinking age is not at least 21 will no longer be eligible to receive federal funding for roads and highway building and repairs so, in that state. Well, then obviously ours is not 21. Did you see it on roads? So, so every state by 1983 has passed laws raising their drinking age to 21. Can you think of any other laws that are still a state by state? All right, the, uh, uh, the a hot controversial topic in America today, the, the issue of same-sex marriages. Gay marriage is, is still right now a state by state decision. Do you know about in Australia it's legal now? Okay. Oh. Any other? Yeah. Like the tobaccos. That's different. All right. 
And in some cases, tobacco is even different by city, depending on where you live. You know, the, the age for purchasing or um, using tobacco. Yeah. Isn't like the uh, the age in which you can get your cancer license? Driver's license. Yeah, getting your driver's license. That is a state by. That is a, dri getting your driver's license is a state by state. Um, Law. The, each state has its own procedures for what kids have to follow to get their driver's license in that state. Any others? What you think I, I don't, I'm not sure. I think the 18, actually the 18 is just for the back, I think that's a national law. Except the Toms. Except the Toms. True story. I know. <laughs> so, you know. So wait, you can buy the alcohol? Yeah. You don't have to be a team to buy your tobacco alcohol. They don't let me buy a life You don't have to be uh, a family dollar. Dollar. You don't have to be a certain age to buy a life Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. Um, another law, um, state by state, uh, at what age? A person is allowed to get married. Each state has their own laws concerning the legal age to get married. I think most, I think most states at 16, except Kentucky. What is it like? You got only got to be 12. <laughs> another, another one that I find kind of interesting concerning alcohol is it's a state by state concerning the percentage of alcohol that can be in certain beverages. Uh, the beer that you purchase in South Carolina will actually have less alcohol in it than the beer you buy in Ohio and other states <laughs> just because of that South Carolina law. And some alcohol things are county by county. I mean anybody who's ever gone down to Cumberland, Kentucky with somebody who's old enough to, to purchase alcohol knows that you have to bring your alcohol with you when you go to Cumberland because that's yeah. all dry counties mm -hmm. in Kentucky there. So it's a county by county decision in the state of Kentucky as to whether or not you can sell alcohol in that county. Uh, Sunday alcohol sales is a state by state thing. Yeah, there's, um, a, huh? there's a gas station in Wilmington that will sell right. on Sundays. Yeah, there's actually a lot. Yeah, and, I'm, and that's either state by state or county. You know, it's the way it's interesting. You know, the way Ohio does its liquor license. Ohio has this liquor licenses. They're determined uh, ahead of time as to how many liquor licenses will be available for each county. And like, let's say I owned a business that had a liquor license, and I and my business closed. I can hold on to that liquor license even though I no longer have a business that sells alcohol. And then when somebody else applies for a liquor license in Clinton County, they'll say, oh, sorry, there's no liquor licenses available. And then I can basically sell my liquor license back to the state and then they sell it to somebody else. And it's really an odd way that Ohio does liquor licenses. It's, I don't think it's like that anywhere else. Um, so yeah, it all just depends. But when they passed the 18th Amendment, they were stepping into territory that had been something the states got to do, and now the federal government is taking that away from them. So the question then, well, you can answer this question, hopefully. and why outlaw alcohol. Now here's what you have to understand. Now there's nowhere in the fill in the blanks for this to go, but for question number 10, you just need to maybe make note that what we're talking about here, these are the things that people thought were going to happen. If we ban alcohol, this is what is going to happen in a positive way to make America better. Banning alcohol is going to improve America. 
by doing the following. We're going to improve the morals, lower crime rates, reduce alcohol consumption, and improve people's health. Those people who supported prohibition honestly believe that by outlawing alcohol, this is how America would benefit. Because people who drink make bad decisions. They act immorally. So if we take away the alcohol, we take away the immoral behavior. People who drink sometimes are going to be involved in criminal activity. Take away the alcohol, less crime. We consume too much alcohol, it's a problem. So if by making it illegal, that should reduce how many people drink. And alcohol is bad for you, it ruins your liver and every and other things, so people stop drinking, our country should be healthier. Yes. So like the prohibition law in China or, or Japan, I think it is actually, where it's illegal to be overweight, what do they do? I don't know. Dude, it feels a little bit weird. The U.S. is being illegal. What about the people who are kind of like I don't know. Yeah, I don't think that that's fair. Like, if you don't have any exceptions for people with like diabetes, you can't help it or something. When you look at these two maps. The top map shows you how many people were arrested in each state uh, for violating prohibition in 1929. The bottom map shows you how many distilleries were busted up in each state in just in 1929. What do these two maps show you about America and prohibition? Huh? Ronnie, what? said something that doesn't all right, so the prohibition really was a law that wasn't about anything. They're caring about something that really they shouldn't be too concerned about. Yes. Um, yeah, no matter what they're going to do, we're still going to do it. All right, no matter what the government says, people are going to do it anyway. Yeah. We really like our alcohol. We really like our alcohol. <laughs> yeah. Okay, this is question. Now, wouldn't outlawing alcohol, like, rise the crime rate? Well, we'll get there. I mean, it does a lot. <laughs> There's a lot of things that they weren't accounting on. Yeah. No. So, I mean, and to me, you know, I look at these maps and I'm just kind of shocked by these numbers because I don't understand. They made alcohol illegal. And we all know that as soon as they make something illegal, everybody stops doing it. So I'm just shocked <laughs> that for some reason it just didn't work in this case. I don't understand that. Yeah, probably every one or two chances. I just don't understand. So then the question becomes. <laughs> yeah, it is kind of. This is where Redneck shine. Yeah. Um, so here's the question. Right? Obviously, prohibition didn't work. And this map shows it, history shows it, whatever. So, then, so here's the question that I always ask when I do this lesson. You guys are teenagers. You've spent most of your lives, I'm sure, being preached to. Don't smoke. Don't drink. Don't do drugs. Don't have sex before marriage. Or, you know, whatever. What? That, that you've been told those things, and you know, by adults in your life. Statistics show that a lot of that behavior, teenagers, a high percentage of teenagers, engage in one or more of those behaviors. So if the question then is, if telling you not to do something doesn't work, from your perspective as a teenager, what would work to try and get teenagers?